Hello guys, Namaste, Eromdur, and Yasia. Today I'm gonna react on Let's Check If Your Brain Washed About India. That video. This is also a recommendation for me from so many subscribers before. That time I thought this is really difficult to explain or to react on that because uh, I was just a beginner. <laughs> and I don't know how to explain. I don't know how to react on that. For now, I know that? No, I don't know. But I just want to try to react on this video. And then I'm gonna try to watch with Korean language subtitles. But that is not perfect because of that, it just mm, automatically translates. So, anyway, let's watch together right now. Before we start, don't forget the thumbs up. Many of you have seen people of Indian origin in your country. How do you perceive them? And how do you perceive India? Many of you think of India as a country of poverty, slums, dirt, rapes, and caste system. And many of you got introduced to India through the famous movie, Slum Dog Millionaire. And then, there are some of you who know India for its Bollywood and yoga. Mm. Well, it is not entirely your fault that you think this way, and there is no doubt that India does have its imperfections, but India is definitely not what we are shown in our countries. Like many of you, I was also a victim of the mainstream media in my country until I ended up living in India and started to keenly observe this country. And of course, to understand India and its mechanism, one really needs to have fine-tuned senses. Next time you see Indians in your country, remember that their country is being transformed into something like this. However, you are mostly shown only that. And of course, many of you were never told that for many years India has been one of the fastest growing major economies of the world. Are you worried that Indians are stealing your jobs in your countries? No. No, you are not fully informed. Perhaps you do not know that Indians are also providing thousands of jobs in your country and they are doing it in different parts of the world. There are more than 800 Indian companies in the UK, which employ around 110,000 people. In the USA, Indians owned firms employ more than 600,000 employees. Have you noticed that when the media in the West talks about rapes in India... They... Actually, that is really famous in these days uh, on YouTube or some Korean about uh, rapes. That is really sad. They rarely talk about the rape rate statistics and probably... Oh, I didn't know that before. Rape rate per... Maybe it's um, the big rumor to all of them in Korea. It is because India is nowhere close to the Western countries in rape rate. Yes, I'm aware that while talking about rape, one must consider things like underreporting, marital rape, homosexual rape, false filing, law of rape, conviction rates, and many other factors. And that is why I sincerely recommend you to dig a bit deep into this and analyze where your own country stands before you become a victim of the mainstream or fake stream media. She's handling or she's just talking about really sensitive topic. By the way, were you also told that the so-called developed countries do not only have a much higher rape rate, but also their citizens travel abroad to rape the citizens of poor countries. Europe, North America, Australia, New Zealand are some of the main sources of international child sex tourists who perform sex crimes in other countries. Were you also told that many Western women travel abroad to enjoy female sex tourism? And it is difficult to believe that the boys who are hired by these rich women are in some cases not underage. India has always been a multicultural society. And yes, in one way or another, discrimination may exist in India too. But wait, which country is crime-free? I, that's what I'm saying. Which country is crime-free? Every country has some crime. Is your country crime-free? Is there no discrimination in your country? 
India is a country where its minorities are allowed to thrive and grow in numbers and also in percentage. India is a country where many Dharmic traditions like Jainism, Sikhism, Buddhism and Hinduism were born. And the people of India have even accommodated the ideologies and religions that did not originate from their own land. When I first heard of Indian caste system in my country through our media, it was not even mentioned that in India, not only the minorities, but also the members from those societies, which are also known as low caste, end up becoming presidents, vice presidents, prime ministers, and chief ministers. Has the media in your country told you about this when they talked about Indian caste system to you? Has the media in your country also mentioned that India has already had a female president and a female prime minister? I know that in many so-called developed countries, many low-skilled immigrants from poor countries are purposely and temporarily brought to do low-class and dirty jobs. These poor people are kept in substandard conditions and after the job is finished, they are sent back to their own countries. The developed countries make the most of their strong currencies and their own citizens shy away from doing small jobs. Well, these developed countries are so smart that they perform oppression on the humans that they import and then later, very cleverly, they dispose them. Can we call it exploitation too? Indians are extremely self-critical and they are genuinely concerned about their problems. They do have the intentions to fix their problems and they do not shy away from talking loud against their democratically chosen governments. That is really healthy group. That is really a good thing, especially to everyone. But you must remember that when Indians talk loud about their problems, it does not mean that they want to replace India for anything else. And it must be pointed out that Indian media has not really started ridiculing the Western countries yet even though many Western countries love to present themselves as some kind of role models. These Western countries continue to forget that they can also easily be ridiculed for their wealth inequality, crimes, intolerance, rapes, poverty and even hunger. Perhaps Indians are more interested in self-correction than ridiculing others. For sure, Indians know very well that tragedy is not a competition. Indians are not only providing jobs around the world, they are even feeding many hungry and poor outside India by their philanthropic work through their temples and gurudwaras. And very importantly, they are not expecting anyone to embrace Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism or Hinduism. That is really important, especially in Korea. Yeah, most of Christians want to change or want embarrass to Christian from anything. So sometimes sometimes that made me or made everyone feeling uncomfortable. So that is also a really big problem in Korea. And then most of most of people uh, I, I could say like that. Some of people feel have some feeling of bad or some negative about Christian. So that is really good thing I just want to say. There is no doubt that India does need to improve its modern waste management infrastructure as many of its streets continue to look dirty even though an average Indian produces far lesser waste than an average American or European. Also, the per capita emissions from India are so low in comparison to the USA or China and Indians are nowhere close to the West when it comes to historical emissions. For all these years, you were told about the poor sanitation of India, but you were never told that Indians were also the pioneers in ancient sanitation system long before the Western countries got civilized. But of course, it shouldn't matter today. Even after 70 years of its independence, India is still not open defecation free. The government of India is running some massive scheme to build millions of toilets and only time will tell if that is going to be enough 
or not? Actually, that is also, that is also really famous、uh, some topic in Korea because of、uh, because of they just do business on outside. Actually, it is a problem, right? So this is、uh, the the good thing is positive thing is it the government try to solve this problem. So that is good thing. So we just so they just need a time, and then if they has. Pro, uh, if, if they solve this problem and then they have to make some video or some marketing about this, like this video. That is, I think that is also important. And then I'm also in joining like this video. So that's why I just try to react on this video, isn't it? And then in future, I will visit India and then I will show you everything if I can. And at that time, everyone can realize of India, isn't it? Not many people know that when it comes to defecation, some citizens in the Western countries have a strange addiction, or rather, a disorder. And this is where a potential exchange can take place between India and the West. India can bring the latest sanitation system techniques from the West, and the West can benefit from the authentic yoga from India that can help those Western citizens who are suffering. From such disorders or addictions, but of course, it can only happen if the Western societies are brave enough to address their embarrassing problems and not just sweep them under the rug, as it is very well known that such kind of disorders and addictions have been reflecting in the Western adult film industry as well. Not many people know that India has nuclear weapons, and it is said. That India has the fourth strongest military in the world, but India does not believe in muscle flexing like China or the USA, and neither it believes in expansionism. And yes, India is not a world leader in everything. It's not a world leader in earning money by selling weapons. It stands nowhere when it comes to earning money by selling crude oil. However, its space agency ISRO. Does earn money by sending satellites in space for a very cheap price, fulfilling the satellite dreams of poor countries, and also by helping the advanced countries which want to save money. India is not a leader in the porn industry, and neither is a top destination for sex tourism. Mostly, Indians are just very simple and kind-hearted people. And only some of them know that their land was the richest in the world for thousands of years, and it was gradually pushed into poverty as it was exploited, looted, and colonized by its invaders and colonizers. And these unfortunate victims, who have just tasted their independence after centuries of oppression and atrocities, are finally rebuilding their country in an extremely democratic environment. That may slow down things a bit for them, but at least their system attempts to involve everyone in the rebuilding of their nation. The good news is that India's rise is unlikely to cause any country a demographic trouble, as India's dharmic institutions are not interested to convert you from your religions. Not just that, we are not really going to face any brown supremacy, even though. Indians themselves come in all skin colors and features. It is also highly unlikely that Indians will hate you, even though many of you may have developed prejudices against them because of the mainstream media houses, which for some special reasons are overplaying and sensationalizing their problems. Indians are gentle, accommodating, compassionate, hospitable, and yes. They do not have a fake smile. Their smiles are still very real, and most importantly, they are forgiving. Look how they even welcome the people from the land of their ex-colonizers in their country, even today. Before you comment on India, remember that the countries which were never colonized. Will not easily understand what it means to suffer from a post-colonial identity crisis. India may have its imperfections, and in this process of rebuilding, it will make its share of mistakes. 
and it will learn from them. Perhaps we also need to learn how to build a relation with Indians on equal terms, with mutual respect, without feeling superior or inferior, while focusing a bit more on ourselves to address our own embarrassing problems. See you again. Okay, most of things I agree with that. And then, especially uh, the last part. These days are different than before. The meaning is, is global, globalized, isn't it? So we could, we can get every, we can get any information and uh, from anywhere. If we could some learn from them, from any any country, absolutely we have to learn from that country or some culture or some habits or some technology. Everything. I don't like normal lies. So meaning, if I go some place and then that people really some bad, or some they just did some racism. And so, so if I have some memory, so and then I I think they play that place racism to me before. So I don't like it. Or they always do that like that. Kind of some normal lies. That is just person by person. Person make some country or some culture some mood so I think this video is really nice at least at least that they uh, the video just try to change change some image of India's uh, negative things and then even another another country even Korea also have some negative image from foreigner so I just want to change change some image even India so I think this is first step thank you for recommendation this video most of times most of things I agree that it's really nice okay so it was my reaction let's check if your brain was about India and then it was a nice video and I just want to try another reaction video if you guys like my video or channel just click the subscribe button and then if you guys want to know about me more than YouTube just follow my insta ID thank you for watching my video have a nice day bye bye